things that have been done to correct or identify. There's a very interesting thing called a water purifier. It's a portable water purifier. I think the current is what a Google Drive. And uh, there are still more departments to go chemical engineering, materials engineering, aerospace engineering. Uh, yeah, so, so lots of. And then all of these would require some, for example, in the department of knowledge of chemistry, aerospace, uh, uh, knowledge of physics, at least uh, some maths as well, materials engineering, and it keeps going on. So there's, there's, there's a plenty of you know, sort of uh, uh, scope to actually you know, you know, kind of move out of your uh, regular curriculum and explore the new things that you your projects. So with that, uh, I, I mean, kind of come to you know this uh, so-called curriculum that you have in school for you. Uh, so uh, it's a mix of courses actually that crop engineering which are believed to be kind of the core courses. So they, they, they're not not going to be very complete but to kind of you know open your door and kind of give an idea about what what's going on in this area. So we start with some basic software programming and then we move on to some basic electrical and electronic engineering. Uh, apart from that, we'll also later have some courses on environmental science and material engineering. So there's a fairly good mix of courses, but what's not properly included is that you can actually do courses, take courses from other departments, which is I think the next slide. Yes, you can do a so called software courses, soft core courses. So, uh, so there's, there's, there's different divisions like electrical sciences, mechanical sciences, these are different divisions. So if you're interested in kind of complex science, electrical Engineering, then there's kind of a lot of departments there where you can take courses based on your interest or your project. Okay, we usually have students from the Indian company that we do taking courses if they're interested in kind of things like optimization or some other like machine learning. Like so you can always be a free to actually go around and check it out as part of your curriculum. And with that, I would like to end my speech. So, anyway, welcome to this uh, kind of machine learning experience that we go through. Thank you. 
Agricultural science, there's, there's also a program that we use. Municipality, all of them. Who teaches these courses? Is the question. So we have the Faculty of Indian History of Science who take all lecture courses. This course is also very heavy on practical aspects. The practicals are absolutely essential for the learning process itself. So all of morning are lectures and in the afternoon are practical sessions. So the practical sessions are taken by, majorly by instructors who are dedicated, they have been recruited them and they are dedicated to this program. They are helped by teaching assistants who are also taken specifically for this particular program. But the entire process is guided by faculty once again. Now whenever Teachers feel, faculty feel that uh, it, their own students should come into the you know, to, to help. So their own senior students also come in. Now, another important aspect of this program, there are students, let's say those who have given a biology in their 11th and 12th, but now since I'll tell you which course is biology, you can see it in they find that maybe biology and they left biology so they don't remember much. So then we also have all students have problems that they with mathematics. We have tutorial classes for every every discipline. So those are taken either by faculty or instructors, both, but also senior students. All the courses now I have a slide which tells you the credits which are given to each uh, course. The first three semesters, all the students who are admitted to this program study all the subjects. At the end of the third semester, the beginning of the fourth semester, students can then choose in which subject they would actually then major. I'll tell you about how many they have. Now, each student has to submit three preferences. So, so far it's been that Whatever the students have chosen, the first person has chosen. Later, if there is a problem, uh, there's too many students going to one particular institution, we have this. So each student gives three preferences, and according to their suitability, then they are allowed to take the major. Now, we have a system of major and a minor, but the minor is not compulsory. Some students may not want to major and then take. Uh, courses which they are of uh, interest to them or suits the research project on which they are last. So what are the major disciplines in which we are awarded the degree? Biology, chemistry, environmental science, environmental science, materials, mathematics and physics. This is the curriculum of the four-year program. As I mentioned earlier, the first three semesters are dedicated to all the subjects that are listed here, math, physics, chemistry, biology, and engineering, and the three credits for all. Now, when you say two is to one, it means two credits for the theory class and one for the practical, which is like I told you every afternoon. Now, of course, math doesn't have that. Humanities, now, humanities is also an important component of any undergraduate program. And therefore, humanities is also compulsory. And uh, these are also, you can see that humanities has 
two credits in the first one semester and then one credit in the later two. Uh, at the end of the three semesters, students choose. They need to do 12 credits uh, in their major discipline, major and minor discipline. They also contribute with the engineering and humanities. And the last semester is dedicated only to uh, the, the, the project, the major project. And the project carries, you can see, 16 credits. Of course, there's a slight difference. Uh, there are only certain credits with, uh, in this material. But most of the other disciplines are 16 credits. So students who qualify need to complete 131 credits in total. Now, why come to ISC? What is so in, in novel about this particular program? Uh, because as our director already mentioned to you, all the faculty who teach are also in, uh, involved in active research. And research, doing research, in fact, feeds a lot into the teaching itself. So IFC provides an inquiry-based learning experience, and of course the environment is highly quality-based. We are not restricted only to faculty, we also are tools and teaching assistants. All of them now come together to teach you something which is, I think, totally different from our other institutions. Yeah? Students are exposed to contemporary research because soon after your third semester you have time, you start doing projects. In fact, even during the, during the summer, during the winter session, when you are off from your classes, uh, at the end of the semester you can request faculty and you can join different faculty for your school projects. You get introduced to research. So that happens all the time. And that's quite, I mean, this is again, we all will agree that this is very early in one's life. In other institutes, you wouldn't be able to do that until you finish with your bachelor. Uh, also, the project, I, I like to read, I mean, I would like to emphasize again that the fourth year project of the EDG program provides clearly a valuable experience. And I like to see that many of our students, with the project that they've done, Incremental, incredibly, incredibly, in, in, forget the word. During <laughs> the fourth semester onwards, they start doing small projects. So, for example, a student in my lab got two publications out of their work we did in So, the research experiences could be that good. Okay, now, about the additional year, I'll come to that a little later, that master's. <coughs> Now, why engineering? Now, my colleague just talked about the various uh, programs that are available and courses that are available in the engineering, uh, different engineering departments, but we don't give a degree in engineering. So why do we need to study courses? So the, all the essential courses, the courses of engineering are towards the basic skills, learning basic skills of electronics, computation, in statistics, which would be required for uh, any science, that is physics, chemistry, biology, math. So all those would be the skills, basic skills that are required. After the first three semesters, where the engineering courses are compulsory, you have been chopped out, you need to take only those. In the next three semesters, four semesters, students can take electives from the engineering, but of course there are specified courses from the engineering also that the question we frequently being asked is whether this course, this degree is recognized by other institutes. Yes, of course. We have the we have the government organization which are listed here and companies and all these two recognized parts for the program. So after completing this, one can think of joining the institute. And so there are plenty of job opportunities as well. But most students who pass out, you see, if they go to, even if they go to um, uh, companies, a few of them have taken jobs after their four year program, but many of them have come back and they like to get into academia. That's, of course, not surprising because ISC has such a, uh, it's an environment, so they come back, they're not happy with doing jobs. 
even though I say again that job opportunity is available. So who recognizes now even IIT and IIC recognize the four year bachelor's degree for students to do their PhD in engineering. And our UG students are eligible for admission to PhD program of course in some degree. Now of course students need to so there was a question that was asked by the president whether this is automatic, no. Students need to give exams for CSR, NET, or GATE. But I must tell you that our students do really so well. Again, I'll give, go back to the Maya. He had a rank of 22 in the CSR. So we anywhere from this our students are also able to be elsewhere, outside the country, in the United States. How many students have we admitted so far? How many have applied? Let's look at that. You can see that when we announced this course for the first time in 2011, we had a very large number that applied. You can see that that dwindled, dwindled a little, but then again we got to say, there's a zero missing here. <laughs> 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 Last year, yes, uh, no, this year we have 2,777 applicants. Last year was 17. How many students joined? So the number applied, the number of author in the country, those who joined. We were very conventional the first time. So we had only 84 students, so you can see that the number has come to a steady state of about 100 and 110. Last year we had 105 who joined and five left. Now why do people discontinue? Most of them uh, have discontinued only because they got admission into what they thought was more important. That's why. Otherwise there's no one else who can discontinue. Again, distribution of these majors. You can see very clearly that physics is the most sought after discipline. And then I go for the PDP and I all of your activities. And when you ask students which subject are you comfortable in and you like, 80% say physics. So physics still remains to be the most sought after. So we've been able to accommodate 26 students even when you are 2016. But so far we've had no problems. All the students who applied for what they thought was the major had got the discipline of interest. What are the students doing now? So of course we keep track of students after they complete the four year program. We see that 2011 batch who passed out <coughs> 2014 are pursuing their PhD higher education in seven universities outside of India. I'd like to point out to one from materials who went to IIM and Dubai. In fact, this year also there are two who got admission into IIM. For the 2012 batch, you can see all the universities that are well known, listed. We are students by the TP, the program, so also 2013 batch. I don't have the 2014, but I know that 30 students have already got admission into the branch outside. Do students only study? No, there are ample opportunities and our directors already mentioned that, that uh, students participate in various programs, quiz programs, they are very good at. Uh, there is this Pravega in Quarks. Now Pravega is the festival that we talked about, the three to four day festival, which is organized totally by the undergraduate students. With some guys from the faculty. And Quarks is a magazine that was started way back in 2011. It's an extremely nice library if you have time to go to UG or undergraduate uh, program office, you can request to see the magazine. It's extremely good. So all these students have still continue to showcase their talents. They also participate in very many uh, cultural programs. Quizzes with the our our team, our uh, ISC UG team has been given the first prize, I think, for two thousand So doing extremely well. I come to the end of my talk, it's just an overview of our energy program, but I'd like to also show this picture of our office staff. Now, all, those who are going to join our program will find that 
you know, meet to meet with the office staff all the time. Um, the, the, our supervisor, <coughs> I think you all have already seen him, Mr. Ashwat. You have seen him, so he has been guiding all of you already. And uh, he is the pillar of the office. And then we have four young women who are extremely talented and very patient and very good. And uh, Professor Balaji Pradhika, of course, who has uh, addressed you. Professor Anil Kumar, who is the other dean who is not here today because he is not here today. So, and he is Mr. Ramanathan, and we have Mr. Ravi, who has also been there for you quite a while. I don't know why he's not in the picture. So, this is a team of the other side. And you can ask all your questions at the end of all the sessions. We have one hour for two hours that we need to have. Thank you. Thing, but that now supersedes organic 
Moving on, why do we think that chemists are not doing much? Or, you know, we don't see chemistry. Well, there's a problem because why you know, see the world around us like this? Great. So, you know, there's a bridge or something to be uh, get here, but there's a gap here which has to be bridged, which is what the IC uh, program is all about, where you can start realizing that whatever colorful thing you have to see. But at the end, we are simply chemical polymers, inorganic materials, or things with lots of transitions and things across the world. So, let's go back to the story of chemical fertilizers, because it's a very nice and pertinent story today. Uh, it begins around when a person called Sir William Crookes. Now, uh, William Crookes was not a mad person. He was you know, a very, very celebrated chemist, and he was also a very, very celebrated physicist. He worked in most physics and chemistry, and then he came up with this prophecy one day that the world is going to end. He was very gloomy, and he said, we are all going to die. And his point was sort of like this. He realized that, you know, human populations have been expanding very rapidly, and people were using the same arable land. Now, like, you know, at one point of time, people used to have all that fashion burn thing that they would grow crops more on the next location. Locations were running off. And, you know, this point, there's no nitrogen content left in the soil because the plant will stop growing. It was true at that time, the crop yield was still not falling. So he felt that we would all have a meal very soon and everyone was going to die. So he looked up at the sky and said, well, we figure out how to put nitrogen into the soil by bringing in ammonia. And that's, you know, the only thing is going to save us. That was answer of course. We all know very well, did get Fritz Kaper did that. You know, he was able to fix nitrogen, but it sort of changed the thing around and we don't talk about that. Until now, when again there is a large number of people looking all around us and claiming, well, we have to get this gas out of the sky now, or else we are all going to die. So, you know, in 100 years, chemistry doesn't really change. We always have something out there to fix. And luckily for you, this problem is not solved. So, you know, if you want to, you're always welcome. Uh, what is chemistry like at IIC? Well, chemistry is a big science, so it is divided into multiple particles of chemistry, which, like its name suggests, covers all area of materials, organic, so metallic, bioinformatic, physiography, and so on. And the materials research center, again, devoted exclusively to materials. There's the organic chemistry department, all aspects of organic chemistry. We are not that innovative in terms of names, so departments do do what they claim to do. NMR Research Center does UK magnetic resonance and you know, its applications towards chemical systems. And then there's my own department on the state instruction chemistry, which uh, works on various solid materials as well as in general materials. So, this is basically how the IC chemistry is partitioned off to also accommodate all the various facets of chemistry. So, also the UG program is divided along similar lines. So, in the first year, or, sorry, first year and a half, Wow. We actually encounter three courses. The first one on physical principles of chemistry, and you have chemical chemistry. So, then you learn inorganic and organic chemistry. The objective here is all of these courses are lab components. We learn how to link things to, you know, what you see around you. That's an important thing here. Uh, other important thing. So, these are the three courses which everyone has to take. After that, is if you do choose to. Make to more and more courses. So, towards semester four, which is with chemists now, you learn thermodynamics and electrochemistry. So, this teaches you, well, thermodynamics teaches you how to look at things in a gross force grain type right way. And electrochemistry, as we know, is the most important science there is. Why do I say that? You want to try it. It is the most important science because you know we wake up in the morning and forget to comb our hair, we forget n number of things, we can't remember dates and anniversary. But if I do, you know, do a statistical survey and ask everyone how much charge is left from your cell phone, around 70% of the people will be right to within 5%. Right. So that really tells you how important value value is in our life. And chemistry is that. So that's why it's so important. And of course, one who says it becomes less important one day. If some chemists uh, you know, want to figure out ever how to make a battery last much longer. That's an open challenge, really. It's into this also. So that's why it's so important. Uh, you learn about instrumentation, you learn about organic chemistry, and organic chemistry as well. Uh, as we move on, you get to learning now you learn the course grade thing, now you learn how to see chemistry you know, from a molecular perspective, that's all about quantum chemistry. In organic chemistry, you learn more. 
things to go with the main room. Uh, again, it can speak teaches you more about making new stuff. So that's structured reactivity. And then you also have lab courses to you know, connect everything. Uh, uh, more than so seven things that you know, statistical mechanics, mechanics is sort of a bridge between the macro and the micro worlds. So you learn about that, case conditions, and so on. And then you learn a little bit more about materials, organic compounds, and components. Uh, but this all this is the important thing of them all your research project because this is ultimately a research oriented course. This is where you actually apply everything you've learned. Uh, so you actually do original research. Now, as mentioned, a large number of students actually do publish their work. They do the research of a quality which actually gets published, which is very remarkable. So that happens around here. This, this part of my work. Pictures about a thousand words. So here's a few pictures from various chemistry UG labs. As you can see, chemistry is a very nice science because you have circled this little balloon out. You know, you don't have to have a birthday or anything to blow a balloon in chemistry. So that's the balloon right here. These are the UG chemistry labs. And what does it do? You also learn how to analyze things using instrumentation, for example, this is infrared spectrometer, photon units, these are research data which are all there in that data and part of the test, you know, uh, you know, the micro etc. Besides studying the also about some things. So, you know, this is the chemistry, you know, more or less for the larger case of reaction part of the data. Uh, this is what happens in IFC. Open data where the students actually devise experiments and show them and teach them to you know schools and colleges all over time. So this is a theory I'm going to have to do. Open data students there at here. This is an industrial visit was done by Sigma Enrich. Now Sigma Enrich is the world's largest manufacturer of five chemicals. This happened uh, ten years ago. These are pictures that you know. Construct people that are astronauts or what else. Um, and finally, you know, this is so there's of course an important question because you know the problem is the main, is there really life after chemistry? What happens after chemistry? You become a chemist. You just vanish, no one has ever really seen a chemist. Right? So actually, most of the students actually do end up talking about PhD. Where do they go? So far, most of them have actually gone abroad. So, in order to go to the these are some of the popular explanations. Now, you know, at some point, I got bored in the slides, so I stopped. There are places like Chicago, Philly, Harvard, etc. And I think here, I'm writing on each other about the top. But students have not yet gone there. They got better off themselves, they didn't go there. Uh, but that's, you know, just to show that there is life on here. Uh, you know, we'll have questions at the very end, so I'll stop here with this colorful slide and we'll move on. Thanks. Uh, next, we want to open a question for Sunday Kloosh. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's all fine. It's 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 fine. And don't add your thing. So we were speaking about more on the I have not skills, but too short. Actually, I don't have much. They have an ox, but they don't have a tail. Now, I have been asked to talk on behalf of Envato and others, and one of the major disciplines. 
fast, you can see this thing from the nature and try to see that how can you store it in different component of systems. The key focus areas are earth science, atmospheric science, civil engineering, and sustainable technology. So, as this program talks about, you have routine lectures, which you need to do, you have to do a lot of lab works, and the lab work means you do some certain experiments, which are kind of cryogenic extractions, preparing solutions, which integrates again chemistry. I must tell you that we don't go away from taking you away from physics or chemistry, we do use the knowledge of chemistry, physics and math, biology to address issues and try to see that how things work. What are the opportunities? You students get opportunity to attend several global scientific programs. For example, one of my UG students participated in going to Antarctic expeditions last year and it's a kind of wonderful experience for them because they try to see that how the ice there in the Arctic or Antarctic, they look like. And he has also developed an interest on how the oceanographic circulations work. And this is taking you from your lab, from a lecture lesson, to something on the field. So we encourage that in our discipline. So these are our curriculum content. As others have already indicated, our real program starts from four semester onwards. And I will try to see that if we get, give you complete exposures, which will make you a ton of our scientists of the earth and environmental scientists with a perspective to see that how we can sustain or protect our nature. So some glimpses of our research agenda in scope. As you can see that earth is with a lot of phenomena like earthquakes. So now one of the things which you essentially see that one can zone different parts of India and to tell that which is seismically more active zone, seismically non-active zone and try to demarcate it. The same thing, we try to do the blood donation map of India, then we talk about CO2 emission, we talk about particle matter emission. So we try to see that which are the regions which are mostly affecting the environment, that is atmosphere in different locations. And sometimes what happens is that we see a diversity phenomenon, like what happens in Nepal or something which happened in Uttar in Fly. So now, of course, all of you know that we are surrounded with a lot of chemicals. greenhouse gases are one of those which may be curtailed or sequestered into the environment so that we don't warm up so much as we are doing it today. Whereas we, I am speaking here, our capital is experiencing a temperature of somewhere around 46 degrees, which is phenomenal. And it is going to go high each time. So now we try to address those. We go to our society with how the water and agriculture demand can be fulfilled. So we try to put our station there in agricultural field, try to see that anthropogenic, that means human-made forces, contributing to making the water and carbon cycle. Finally, the aftermath of this carbon cycle is our ocean, because the ocean is deteriorating with time. So again, hydrological cycles, when you think of our rivers, the process which drives the river systems are glaciers which are there. Then you have a precipitation, if you don't have those, you will essentially have a dry river system. And we don't know that what really happened to our civilization, like corrupting civilization or inter civilization. Why would they perish? Many of our research scientists or researchers, including students who are right from the UG level, they are trying to probe those. So these are kind of opportunities. Again, tropical cyclones, which comes once in a while, becomes very deadly. There are numerical programs where really you use the your knowledge of thermodynamics, your knowledge of say a transfer of energy from ocean to the land and where does it meet, how the forcing will lead to a loss. This is processes which have been captured from Center for Atmospheric Ocean Sciences. There are some cyclones which will be more in future. We are trying to see how we can address that and see that how essentially you can start minimizing the loss, telling that you can inform the society so that it is going to happen and there will be process like evacuations, Removal of humans from one location to another, which will definitely lead to the reduction of our human loss and properties. There are programs talking about Bay of Bengal. We know that India is surrounded by two ocean sea or landmark or ocean mass, which are really different in terms of its evaporation and in terms of precipitation. Bay of Bengal receives a lot of precipitation, so it has a level which is a little higher than Alien Sea, which is essentially experiencing a lot of things like evaporation. So then because of that you have various phenomena which is mostly been seen in Bay of Bengal. So there are 
programs talking about salinity devaluation of Indian Ocean, which talks about things like that. Many of you have read it during your school days, during your top 10th and 12th, where people talk about this phenomena. Essentially, they are built by thermodynamics, which is happening in the nature. Other activities include experimentation, like Center for Sustainable Technology, they are involved in generating cold, cold plasma, for example, which can essentially take out bacteria like E. coli and deactivate spoons and other materials. Then you have cold plasma and ozone generator, which is used intensively for treatment of wastewater. So the group there at Sustainable Technology, they are working on those aspects to do mitigations to see that how you can essentially control such kind of process which are being affecting our environment and how can you have a better world tomorrow. We also go to West to Energies. Again, Center for Sustainable Technologies are involved in talking about fish below resources being explored for energy generation, like pencils, which are Hindustan pencils, which are used for talking about the how the pencils. <coughs> then you have things like hyperthermal usage, you talk about wood powers, you talk about biofuels. The group at Sustainable Technology talks about such innovation technologies to use how the West can be converted into energies. Exposures, yes, students are exposed to take them to the field, and this is being incorporated by many of us to say that we will go to the field, see the exposures. See the exposures, which tells many things. It tells many things about the nature when it was deposited. And some of these exposures at our doorsteps, very close by. So we try to take opportunity of exposing the student to see the, how the early life really started. And finally, you take those materials for doing any kind of microscopic investigations. People or UG students are very fortunate to have those facilities there in our campus to talk about such process which are really very old and talk about early life on this planet. We have exposures to high-end equipment like mass producers, so our Center for Earth Sciences, <coughs> as well as we have AFM facility which has microscopic lab is heavily been used to address such kind of issues. So now students get exposures to go and analyze the samples to see that how the chemical compositions at certain point of time in the past, how they varied and what could be the possible factors which are attributed to that. Of course, the, most of you are bothered about this question as I understood. The future aspirations period goal, of course we are new. Till now, we are at about, sorry, 25 students being graduated from our discipline and 50% of them are pursuing their research or high-end academia. Few of them decided to join industry. Some of them they decided to join management and civil service as they are serving to the society as a civil servant. So there, these are few glimpses of our research potential. And there are faculties who are there out there to always take care of you, who are offering courses, always interacting with you, and they teach you various aspects, they will feel, give you exposures, and finally, you will have a lot of questions, I know. So as Anjali mentioned, that it will be all dealt at the end. But if, in case you are interested, you can always contact our coordinator, Professor Sekhar Mutu, to coordinate this program. Thank you very much. Next, we move on to the more colorful uh, aspect of the usual program, which is the humanities aspect, to be presented by Dr. Pitasta. Good morning. My name is Vitas Tanath and I'm an instructor with humanities in the undergraduate program. Uh, the humanities curriculum is conducted by the Center for Contemporary Studies of IASC, which is headed by Professor Raghavan Nagarakar. He is also a professor in the Center for Ecological Studies of the Institute. 
and earth. So we wish to tell you that we have put a lot of thought in designing the course in the humanities, and it's not uh, like uh, the ones conducted in probably in IITs, where uh, humanities is like a you know, standalone course, which has no synergy with what you're doing in your core courses. Here we have tried to see a synergy between the natural sciences and the social sciences and humanity so that you get a grip of what is happening in the world around you. We see, we, we think that uh, uh, sciences are, are deeper and uh, you know, quite a complex uh, relationship with science, uh, culture and society and we try to map this relationship in the courses. And so that you as budding scientists can give effective leadership in you know, the most, uh, you know, demanding aspects of life, like, you know, health, hygiene, agriculture, etc. So as Ma'am had explained, uh, in the first three uh, semester, I mean, it is compulsory for all of you who are all going to be joining, there's no option, it's not optional. So for so the first six to, to six semester, it's compulsory. From first to third semester, it's two credit course and uh, the credit course. That is, you will be having two classes per week for the first three semesters and one class per week in the next semester. So uh, first semester is, we have named, uh, first three semesters are the core or the foundational courses when we have named it ways of knowing, ways of seeing and ways of doing. In the ways of knowing who would be joining the course to the uh, methods of inquiry in social science and humanities. And um, uh, we have four modules in it, ethnographic methods, psychological methods, historical methods, and we see how each discipline do know what they know and how to go about bringing their research. Second uh, semester is called Ways of Seeing. He introduces students to uh, the you know how the world around them is represented in the artifacts. They, there are again four modules: literature, visual art, the, uh, theater, and music. So we have had very famous people, uh, the experts in the field, coming and teaching our students. And students have had workshops of culture making. Then uh, the recently concluded second semester student had the option to, uh, you know, be taught by uh, a very famous uh, creative personality, uh, Professor Vijay Patki. Then before that, uh, a very famous uh, film and uh, theatre person, uh, uh, Prakash Bhaiwari, had taught the students. So uh, along with the courses, the students also present something. In at, at this uh, part of this uh, second semester course, the students had presented uh, a play. And before that, the students had presented uh, this play called Photography. I'm sure some of you must be aware of it. Photograph 51 is based on the life of Rosalind Franklin. So it was done in a big scale. It was you know, uh, open for the public as well. So the last of the three foundation goals, ways of doing is where we see uh, how scholarly knowledge can be used to solve real life problems. So here also we have two modules, economics, people and nature, science, uh, law, science and law, and sustainable development. Then we come to the uh, remaining semesters, which are seminar courses, and it's, uh, as I told you, it's one class per week. And uh, first one, which uh, the fourth semester course, which I teach, is called Mapping India Through the Forecast. It's a uh, fifth semester is the for science, and the uh, sixth semester is Introduction to Governance. So Mapping India uh, Through the Pope Art is where, um, okay, one of the ambition of the humanities curriculum here is to make the students aware of you know, what is happening in the, the nook and corner of the country. And we want our students to come out as you know, empathetic students, not removed from the society. So where, what I have tried to do in this course is try to make students aware of the country, looking at the various folk art forms, either it's visual or performative. I'll give you a few examples. At first, batch I taught, uh, I had asked the students to, you know, uh, represent some scientific concepts using the folk art forms of India. So they have done, um, so this one was uh, the, uh, uh, using the own art form of Madhya Pradesh. It has represented the animal evolution. This was the four color theorem. This is the Madhubani uh, using Madhubani. They have shown the genetic uh, Mendel's second law. And this is expression in the art form. So we brought out a book at the end of it, Art in Science, which is used to get to you know visitors of any district of science. So second batch I taught was um, we dealt with uh, folk music. I'll come to it a little later. Third batch which I taught, we did folk theater. We focused on folk theater. And again, the challenge to them was given that either you represent some scientific concept through the folk theater form or uh, you know talk about uh, superstition or something which you can burst through scientific knowledge. So here they had done 
now they steer them to the shadow of puppetry. And this was the flower, and they were talking about uh, the you know, tribal issues. And uh, Sylvia Ranswinda was talking about uh, gender you know, equality. This was Ram Lila, where we think it was a technology take on Ramayana. Uh, there they were talking about the importance of education. Then uh, this was Nakal, they were bursting superstition. This was. Um, this was uh, this is Swang, and they were talking about an anthropomorphic centric view of human beings. The next year, uh, we focused on uh, folk dance form, and we did a performance called Sway with Science. I'll come to it again later on. Then this uh, this year, which we recently concluded, we focused on tribal issues, and uh, it was we did uh, the challenge to the students was given on Jal Jangal Zameen and Science. What is the relationship of forest? Which are, this Jaldiz and Zamin are supposed to be the most essential uh, you know, aspect of tribal life and what has science done to, to this aspect. So again, uh, I had asked them to do, uh, uh, there were two components of the, uh, so one was um, to uh, um, ask them to do visual, uh, visually what science has done to the enhancement of the three aspects. And they have, here they have shown, done through bone art form, they have shown the you know, animal corridor. This is a coral reef restoration through bill art form. This is a, you know, uh, this is miniature painting and they are showing how, uh, you know, uh, DNA through DNA mutation, uh, the trees can be made to resist drought. And this is again uh, the Dipa art and they are trying to show the relationship of science, uh, you know, various aspects of science uh, with the, the environment. So fifth semester courses are journalism for scientists. Uh, here we try to see how journalistic tools can be used to write science stories. So they have brought out a few journals uh, and newspapers every year they bring out. And the last course, which is also a very popular course, it's called Introduction to Governance. Here is a very unique opportunity where the students uh, get to talk, meet, question, uh, you know, stakeholders of the government, the aspect of governance. So so far we have had many people. I have put only few in the list. We had Justice 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 Chela Mishra, which is uh, in news. This is then uh, Deram Ramesh, Mark Tuli, then uh, sitting uh, MP of uh, Parliament. So they, they come and they talk to the students, and the students get the opportunity to question them, you know, and to ask why did you take this decision. I think uh, nowhere in the country you will get this opportunity. So, uh, as part of, as an add on to this course, the introduction to government, we recently had an exhibition, it was a big map exhibition called India on our minds. And students also gave a, a small component in this exhibition. So I'll leave you with some nice things. Uh, I want to show you. Uh, okay, maybe I'll play for you one song, which was written, composed, sang. Uh, this was the uh, second batch students, 2013 batch students, who had whom I had asked to talk about some scientific concept through folk uh, music. And this student, only using a bamboo stick and a wooden desk, has composed this song and sang it and recorded by dancer. I'll just play for you.
and the research which we are doing is probably beyond your level. You are yet to see any mathematics. You may think that your math paper is tough in plus one and plus two, but uh, as far as we are concerned, you have not seen any mathematics yet. You do some small arithmetic so far. Uh, <laughs> and probably finding something, little bit of limits and integration probably can say that uh, this is the first step of many several steps which you are going to climb to see the mathematics. So I will not do anything about the subject which you are doing it in our department, but we may say like an advertisement about our department, we will tell what's going in the department. In between you need some advertisement. Yeah. If you are really strong and passionate and hot about doing mathematics, please come to the department, take a cool shower in front of the department, climb the steps, and then convert your passion into reality. It's a nice department, one of them. It's good. That's what I said, it's an adoration. It's one of the best departments. Because we don't have the smell of chemistry and the biology <laughs> and so many electrical connections and power connections in the life in the department so engineering and very pleasant peaceful department but the thought is going on in the brain so the people may not be that nice like other department but they are still nice people <laughs> So our department is uh, started not when the institute started in 1909. It took another almost 50 years to start and started as a uh, what you said uh, department to help the others, mainly concentrating on the applied. But over a period of time, we evolved in it's an independent department. And now it's a healthy balance between. Applied mathematics and pure mathematics. So don't think that you may still walk around in the camper. People may say that there is an applied mathematics department. That old faculty said because the name of the department was applied mathematics before 1990. My name and that symbol I am still prevails in some of the reports. But if you have changed it, you made a committee argument, may have changed it from name to MA. Now it's a mathematics department. So you have a very healthy balance between all the subjects and it was also a center of advanced study during the period 2011 to 16. Other one is an PhD program. You don't have to worry about that. It is, you know, PhD is a program for a master. So when you complete your five-year program of the BS, and then the that's also a PhD program, which is a, a program for your after your studies. So if you complete your BS, you can In PhD, you don't have a sense to join because if you want to continue here, you complete your BS, work one more year, so you get your master's. So you don't have to do it. All admissions are based on there will be some national level examination. There are many like CSI or NET. Uh, NPH and GATE and so many things. For in PhD program, it's a jam, joint admission test conducted by the And the, But the meeting, that's only a screen meeting. After that, you have to come to, uh, as I said, take a full shower in the committee. And then, okay, then there will be. The department also participates in the UG program. 
of this one. And uh, so you have you are coming to us. The department has pioneering interdisciplinary programs like national. So we help for the outside, the, not only we restrict to the institute, we have in the lot of people on the radio program. So they come here for workshops, our faculty goes to work, like any other department. So, but we have a very good and it's also involved in TV people. Well, many of you are here, uh, and you are here because of K. Many of you are here because of TV people. So this is essentially the we they call other departments. And we also take an American The faculty of the department have been awarded. This is nothing new to the department. In fact, in other departments, you will see uh, they have many national and international. You will see throughout the department that we have faculty, we claim to be the one of the Department is a well balanced department in the country covering essentially every area of Nepal. So you don't have to worry when you come here, you have to follow them. We cover more or less every subject. I will tell you some details of that. As PhD students have the opportunity to work in the area of their choice, the BSM students, that's what you are concerned, have the ample opportunity to learn from the that's what the advantage here. You are not just learning after they don't treat you once you join and complete your one and a half year and then uh, there is a bridge course in the sports semester after that you are like faculty in PhD we don't really distribute those so you are studying the masters so your colleagues sitting in your class will be in PhD and PhD students not only from the department across the country so you have uh, learning from the masters. By the end, BS, you would have studied math more. And that's one thing we can guarantee you. If you complete your fourth, four year BS program, you would have studied much, much more than most of the MSc programs of the country. So you are ready material to do this. And the most of our main That's the thing you have to keep in mind when you join. You may ask this question. But get it. That's how I'm And you have a free another thing, you have the freedom to choose many courses uh, offered by the department outside the department of our PhD student. As I said, hence after MS, after BS, you are much more than MS, and after MS, uh, you can directly get into the research. But normally, when most of the MSc students come out from the other university, they have to at least give one year of course. So you minimum save one year to do your PhD. Even if you go abroad to do PhD, you can start your research, right? Now I will briefly describe to you what are the subjects <coughs> which we do it. Probably all these, many of these names will be new to you. So you don't worry, Most the best way to learn if you don't understand, just keep it for some time. Keep it cool and come back and think about the idea. It's the same thing. You are so worried about one idea. Close your eyes, go into the humanities department and see the dance. Come back and <laughs> And by the way, that's very nice for And we have a strong group in algebra and number three. So if you don't know that our names, it's all right. As I said, you may not have heard about except number theory, number theory. Because number you can describe the problem easily, but hard to solve. So all of you, right from your childhood, you will see so many problems. And we have people working in commutative algebra, algebra and geometry. These are all really fancy subjects. When you say that your own BS students will be talking about that name, whether they know that subject or not, doesn't matter. I want to do it uh, research in algebra and geometry. When you ask what, what is algebra and geometry, it doesn't matter, right? To talk, you don't have to know much. It's like what I <laughs> and then there is people working in representation theory and number theory. This is a, uh, probably classified in algebra and number theory. And there are uh, four to five people working in bracket area. These are the names what you see in bracket of my, of my faculty colleagues. They are all here. And then analysis is our main thing of our uh, department, mainly concentrated on analysis. You can call it large number of people working in that. Starting from differential equations, functional analysis, operator theory, harmonic analysis. These are all really hot cakes from once you learn to that. 
and then positivity. That's a very special, I think. Complex variable and several complex variable. You would have heard about just complex numbers. Complex numbers is not complex analysis, something more. Okay. And then you have discrete mathematics like geometry and topology. All of you talked about geometry. Topology name, you would not have heard about it unless you read something. That's a fancy name of geometry. And then you have low dimensional topology. You want to understand your world after you are free. Uh, rings. What are all these things? All of, everybody knows what is a plane, but not, none of us can describe what is a plane, right? Digital. <laughs> then logical. There is a very strong group in applied mathematics areas also, like theoretical physics, mathematical physics, like theoretical physics, nonlinear dynamics. And uh, this is uh, another interesting topic, probability and its application. You know it has uh, several applications, including to finance, probability theory, stochastic process, time series analysis, This is roughly the kind of various areas of research going on and various All this information is available in our website. We modified the website in the last one year to show to you. Just take into our mass website you know, all these information, including the research, who does what type of publishers, the entire information of our department is available. So tonight you spend on that and then go to our department. Okay. Currently we have 24 faculty members. That's a small little bit compared to a big department like aerospace and mechanical engineering, biology, and uh, uh, that's okay for us. <laughs> but we are trying to make it to 30 in the next few years, which we will achieve. But then the aim is to reach 40 and 50, then it would be good. But uh, that you may not see, maybe all, some of you have to come back. The institute may not allow that many. But if you have a good 50, it's like a European or uh, American type of universities uh, where there are a large number of faculty. So not only we need people from individual areas, we need groups of people in the area that we are yet to grow. That, that means what I'm saying that I'm promising that you have an opportunity not only to study math, you have an opportunity here as a faculty. So I'm more interested in some of you will come back here as a mass faculty. The department for several inspired faculty fellows, Raja Ramana fellows, these are all some of them are their faculty and DST for young faculty that find the job before that. We have around 60 PhD and PhD students. This number may look again small compared to a biology or chemistry department because there one faculty can afford up to eight students to manage. But mass, the current trend is that more than two is half. Two is okay. Three is out of more than three is definitely difficult. So compared to that ratio 24 60, it's an extremely good number in for the internationals. This does not include uh, BS students who come and take courses. I'm talking about the students. We have that's a good number of students from UT also choose mathematics as well. So you, we do get all the department, you just uh, get it, but uh, uh, we have a very good distribution so far, and we get that kind of enough number, good number of students for UT, they choose mathematics as well. So you can interact with them. Some of the volunteers here are math students, I don't know. And this is one of the things you have to always look in when you go to a department. We have probably one of the youngest department in the campus because we have a lot of new admissions there. And mathematics is generally considered like a sports. Only if you have good physical stamina, you can just that is not enough. You need the neck also to play. But you need a very good physical stamina to do spoils. You need an extremely good mental stamina to match. So we consider mathematics is young man's game. So you have to do your math before 30. Then you may think that why are we are all here when you are between all. Because then we have some experience, we can do, we can do things. But real sharp mind works. Uh, you, are, you are in the beginning of the sharpest brain right now. That you can digest any mathematics. 
from that. You may have lack of experience and knowledge, but whatever you give, it doesn't matter. You can tell just the maths is done in the best math. That's why the um, uh, best award of Fields Medal, somebody to not try, is awarded to people below 40. They so have to do good maths uh, at the age of 30. Then you get your Fields Medal to 40. That's like a Nobel Prize for maths. The approximate uh, number of papers published by your faculty, and again, these numbers for uh, physics and other people may not affect biology because we, they say that even one or two of our many papers. But uh, I'm comparing with other maths departments. The, we generally see a good paper, two good paper is more than enough. Even one good paper is good enough in India. So we have approximately more than for our 24 faculty with our students, we have roughly something like two points something. That's again like an So we can't be, I didn't mention here, we have some analysis if you go to Harvard and Princeton and anything. That, I'm not telling that quality will be of that man. We may probably get to reach that quality, but definitely we we'll publish uh, uh, in that day. Several of these papers have appeared in reading journals. You don't have to remember all these numbers. This is, as I said, every advertisement you don't see any, you will only the person who is doing the advertisement, right? Like an advertisement comes who is the hero, who is the hero, and he's the player. Just like you, it's enough to see me. <laughs> More than 30 students have successfully completed, defended their PhDs during the period. Any students have defended that. Uh, plus, the BS students, BS students are there with us. Anyway, we make them sure that they get their BS. Uh, with all okay. and many of them have found that's why that our PhD students, many of the BS students have also gone abroad to do PhD and they have found jobs in the first institutes in the country, even now. The fact, as I said, the faculty student ratio is something like this. We also help us as that we do some human resource training, like NMA, it's a national mathematics initiative. It's an interaction, the primary goal of this is to foster interdisciplinary collaboration. That's one advantage again, you may ask the end of it, is to, uh, you can come as courses in our years and month, but the compulsory courses are very minimal. All other courses you have an option to take from any department. So, and uh, something kind of So you have the interdisciplinary opportunity to work with other people. Even if you like biology, uh, physics, chemistry, it doesn't matter. You have an opportunity to interact uh, computer science, anything you can do. You can take courses from the other department to complete your course. So that's where you don't get this opportunity. It's the same with other departments also. Okay. And that's what I said. Earlier, maths and biology is considered to be North and South Pole, uh, but that's not true, actually. That depends on if you think that mathematics and biology is the two ends of a uh, line segment, yes, it looks like both ends, but for mathematics, a uh, line segment is equivalent to a circle, right? That you know. If you take the line segment and join the two end points, you get a circle. That means we are in the process of actually teaching the two end points and considering it as a circle. The thing why biology and maths is two and so far thought, it's not why maths doesn't have applications in biology, but as far as my limited knowledge is concerned, biological problems are the hardest problems to modern mathematics. It's a much, much more difficult than any other subject to do. Because you can't you have to do that one. But then it's going to be a math, a biomath. Biomath is going to take shape in the next two few years to come. Still, there are a lot of applications which you see in your computer, uh, computer tomography and uh, how to even tensor determination. So there are so many things where mathematical models are available. Mathematics is the hardcore mathematics. For example, CT scan, if you think that it's actually the Fourier transform and the general algebra is behind that machine. 
It is working behind. No, you may go and do a CT scan, you may come up with a given uh, thing, but you, behind that, the heart for metabolism. Whether hyperthermia, there are, if you can model the kind of things in terms of treatment, like hyperthermia, treatment, how to give a correct dose of medicine, where to give, at what temperature to give, where all that important, you can do that all kind of control problems and all that. So the application, modeling, blood flow, it's all there. But it is hard. It's hard. That's the reason. But it's going to take shape. And that man, well, that's where there is a mathematical error. And then we also have the interaction. This is just one we have shown in different centers. We have a collaboration workshops. Mathematical Olympiad self coordinates Olympiad program of the National Board of Mathematics. There are some myths which I tell you here. It is done already. What we know how to add numbers, you may think what more mathematics is needed. As you are bright students, I am sure you may be you know, thinking that some of your parents may be thinking, what is there to do math? Let's do some, some of the subjects. That's not true. It is nothing. This is the most serious thing. Most of the people talk, what math? Anyway, you are doing biology, chemistry. Why do you need you don't have nothing to do with the real world. That's not true. Okay. Uh, this may be true. It is for the few. It's not mass, it's not for everybody. You need to have that special badge. You need to have a special interest in math. So if you don't have passion for uh, the every subject is that, but this you need a very specialized that you will see even in the bunch of uh, people always think about math. You need I, only obvious things are true. That's not true. You may think that very complicated thing, then we make assumptions, assumptions, etc. Finally, you come to a theorem, it is trivial, looks like. That's not true. We come to that and then try to expand slowly, slowly. We may not reach the one we started with it, but we start with the small theorems to do somewhat non trivial. And that is it. You are our future, not we. And uh, Welcome to the department of maths. Explore the beauty of mathematics. I'm more or less saying, but as I said, uh, uh, you to, uh, all of you will be curious to do not the research in maths, uh, but all of you are, I'm sure, being good students, maybe for a crack, you always like to do solve problems, right? So I will give a problem. Many of you would have heard about that, but those who have not heard, it's time for you to, and you need only six times maths to do it. Okay, nothing more is okay. Many of you heard about Heron's problem. So maths has two different things. Sometimes the problem will be very easy to state, but it is very hard to prove. So you have to have to recognize, for example, all of you know the Fermat's last theorem. You know a square plus b square equal to c square has several integer a, b, c as solutions to that. The moment this is done some 350 years, everybody knows that. And then for Fermat started doing it for a cube plus b cube equal to c cube. Can we find integer a power four? And then he, all of you, many of you may be sure that Fermat really received the whole maths community. He wrote it on the side of his book. Uh, I have a beautiful solution to this, but then the margin is too small to write it. But I think Fermat also made a mistake for that everyone can explain the problem, everyone thought that you can do the problem. People started working finally in the 350 years, a huge area of number theory developed, and it is proved only 25 years. His theorem was right, but we still and the actual proof runs into several thousands of pages. So uh, so I will just say, on the other hand, if you have given a perimeter, fixed perimeter, if I ask you what is the largest area. What is it? Circle, right? But you have give, give a proof of it. How many of you know? Fix the surface area, how do you fix it? Yeah. Yeah, problem is easy to end. Uh, one minute. You have a highway and there are two cities, A and B, and the government want to construct a bus stop at C. And they also want to construct the roads from A to C and B to C. You want to location, find the location of the point C such that A C plus B C the length of the road is minimum. Okay. Thank you. All right. The solutions.
symbol to your preferred beauty is that then i'm not sure so work it out uh, during lunch time i think we need to move on uh, the next uh, presentation will be by so karthik gel from materials engineering department who is also the coordinator of the materials So my work is really cut off, cut out for me. Uh, also, if you, as uh, Professor Anju Pandey said, if what you know of chemistry is only fertilizers and uh, what else did he say, paints, then you know nothing about materials at all. So <laughs> I have introduced what materials are. Okay, so that's my work is even more difficult. So uh, I'll try to make it as short as possible because I'm standing between you and lunch. Not just me, there are two other faculty members going to go after me, so uh, I'll keep it brief. So if you have questions, um, this is the the program how it's fluctuated over the years. The first year, like most of you, nobody knew what materials was, so nobody took it. Uh, we just tentatively put their foot into the pool, and they liked it. So, so the, the next year it was a worse. except that my department is not equipped to handle so many students. We already have a very big uh, masters and PhD program, and when we got 30 undergraduate students, we our department sort of crashed. So we had to tame it down, and now we have a steady state of about 15 students every year. All right. So what is materials, right? Nobody knows. So if uh, if the uh, if you see a tree, materials are all around you. Some are right everywhere around you. If you see a tree, it's not a material. But it, as soon as it becomes wood which is all around you, where it has an application, where it serves a purpose, it becomes a material. Wood becomes a construction material, right? So material is defined according to uh, the fount of all knowledge Wikipedia as this. It's a substance and it's typically uh, a solid which has an application. So application is something that we we'll keep talking about when we're talking about materials. Um, materials is close to chemistry, materials is close to physics, and so it's the highly interdisciplinary, okay? So what we give you is a uh, is a BS degree in materials, but it's in across the world the typical degree which is given is in material science and engineering. So it is an engineering plus science uh, type of field, it's applied science. So there's a strong there are elements of physics, chemistry, biology which come into uh, come into materials. There's a lot of mathematics and computation also involved, in, right? And the engineering application engineering side of it is because we are trying to develop deliver materials for applications. So it's always driven to the applied side, okay? Um, and the emphasis is on realizing concepts and enabling technologies, okay? And it, it, it's worth saying that most technological breakthroughs are limited by availability of materials. I'll give you an example. Uh, when we, I, I, this is a very common case example, very, uh, nothing high effect. When do you think the electric bulb, the incandescent bulb, the idea was who came up with the idea of incandescent? Say Edison. 
right? That's what everybody says. Edison is like Elon Musk. If you said Elon Musk discovered space travel, you know it's not true. And that's how it is with Edison also. Edison was an excellent marketer. Okay? The first incandescent bulb, or not the bulb, incandescent effect, basically passed current through a metal and glows, and you get light, was 1761. It took 120 years after that for the first commercial bulb to be available. Why? Because material was available. You could have, you could have, could easily come up with the physics behind the process, develop something useful, and get an application out of it, it was still limited by materials. So the first uh, commercial bulbs, which Edison marketed very effectively, were made of carbon filament, and 20 years down the line, somebody made uh, tungsten filaments, and so on and so forth. Okay? So the point I want to make here is that there are ideas which originate in science, but to, uh, very often to make, realize them, you need materials. You know, space travel, everybody has known about rocket, rocketry for 1000 years. Chinese had rocketry for 1000 years. But to actually send a moon, man to moon required materials, special materials, right? So that's what we do. We are, we are enabling uh, discipline. We enable technologies. And so breakthroughs in material science will have significant impacts on future, where we proceed, okay? And easily it's one of the fastest growing fields. And in fact, I would say that many people in physics are doing materials research. Many people in chemistry are doing materials research. Many people in mechanical engineering, in aerospace engineering, are actually doing materials research. Okay, so it's everywhere. What kind of demands do we have? In today's day and age, we're dealing with energy and environment. This is probably the most uh, uh, important area of concern. We are running short of energy. So I have just listed a couple of hot topics. So we need materials for solar energy, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, clean coal, carbon dioxide sequestration, batteries, vehicles, etc. And so on. So this is one aspect of it. Or it could be in aerospace and defense or in health. These are all important areas, right? And we need materials for them. It's no longer lighting. But lighting is also there. If you look at uh, 100 years ago, there would be incandescent bulbs here, then it became regular long fluorescent tubes, then it compact fluorescent, then LEDs, and so on and so forth. Okay? So uh, you will come across applications which are strategic, like nuclear or uh, aerospace, or they will be commonplace, like, like, like plastic bags which have to be biodegradable. Okay? All of these require materials. And that's where we come in. Broadly, and uh, this is not uh, something that you may be aware of, broadly, the way we see materials is in terms of classes. Right? So you have metals, you have ceramics, you have polymers, you have glasses, you have elastomers, and so on and so forth. These are various classes of materials. Okay? And some examples are shown here. But very often, we don't think of them in terms of material classes. Because these are all material classes are broadly based on the type of atoms, the type of bonding, type of structure and so on and so forth. We often think in terms of what is the application? What is the material applied for? Is it going to be applied for bearing loads? Or will it be applied, will it be used for some functions? It could be optical functions, it could be magnetic functions and so on. That's how we see it. Fine, so all this is an introduction to materials, but what, what kind of materials do we deal with? In my department, the kind of work that we do encompasses all these. Okay, it could be multiferroid materials, magnetic materials, photovoltaics, OLEDs. It was mentioned, you know, OLED TV, organic LEDs. Imagine that polymers are known to be insulators, right? LEDs. Make, how do you make an LED or an organic material? It's, it's, it's polymer based uh, LEDs. Very interesting. Okay. So and I've just listed a whole series of topics there. These are the kind of materials that we work with. Okay. All right. Uh, and I would uh, stick my neck out so far out to say the history of mankind is history of materials. All of you know this. The various ages are called, are named after the materials which were prevalently used for Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, and so on and so forth. Okay. So it's uh, that's because materials enable technologies. What is possible is often limited by what is the material which is available. Okay. What was the tallest structure of known to mankind till 1880. Great pyramids. 
Okay, it's been it was the tallest structure for thousands of years till the advent of steel. Then Eiffel Tower became the tallest for a brief moment. Okay, so that is this transition right here. Oops. I don't think the point works. That's okay. So right. Fine. So it's. Right, the pointer doesn't work, sorry. It works? Ah. Sorry. Right. So, uh, I, I'll, I can give you many examples like this. The first computer was a mechanical computer, Charles Babbage's computer, 1838, right? What was the big significant breakthrough which made computing so easy now? <coughs> Silicon, right? Right there. Somewhere there. Age of silicon must be mentioned somewhere there. That's what made computing possible. In this room, we have more computation power in our pockets, in our cell phones, than was available 50 years ago in all of the world. Okay? It was possible because of material. It was possible because of silicon. Okay? So just two examples of what is possible because of uh, materials. So what do we do? What do material scientists and engineers do? Of course, we, if you have an application in mind, we try to select appropriate materials for that. Okay, how do you, and I'll show you an example of that. That's one aspect of it. It's perhaps a very important aspect of it. Let's say, what material is appropriate for this? That's a good question to ask. Or what material is appropriate for the uh, screen guard which goes on your cell phone? So we select appropriate materials for that. The second role that we play is the alchemy role, where we mix things, come up with new stuff, exciting stuff. So that's the that's the magic portion part of it, right? Identify potential applications for them, and so on and so forth. The third is to improve existing materials and find new applications for them. Okay? And, and, and the challenge always is you want to reduce the environment impact, you want to reduce cost, make things affordable, and things of that nature. We want to improve manufacturing processes. Remember that silicon single crystals would not be possible but for a specific technology which enabled that. Right? That was the materials of science. And lastly, we often worry about how materials fail. I don't know how many of you are, have seen those cell phone batteries exploding on charging. That's a material science problem. Why does it fail? So we do post-mortem analysis. It's like a forensic analysis. That's what that's a big part of what we do. How materials fit. Okay. Uh, or I can give an example of I don't know how many of you have seen this uh, uh, Southwest Airlines. Recently, they, there was an engine failure that directly relates to the kind of work that I do. So why the engine failed is related to the materials problem, right? So, and I won't spend a lot of time on the next slide, but I'll just tell you an example of again going back to the lowly example of a uh, incandescent bulb and i'll tell you there are so many elements in this there's nothing high five in this very simple but look just look at a bulb and look at the number of components in there you know you have glass glasses are there you have ceramics you have metals each of them performs its own function there's a specific reason tungsten is used there's a specific reason a certain type of glass is used there's a specific reason that the bottom is made of a certain type of ceramic, certain type of porcelain. Okay, everything has a reason for why it is. These are based on properties, but they're also based on cost. They're also based on whether you can even make it, whether you can manufacture this. Okay, these are the things that we consider. So this is an example of a bulb where you have too many parts, and I'm focusing on bulb because it's everybody knows about this, right? But it could be something like an optic fiber, a little more complicated. And here you see the marriage between metals, glasses, polymers, Kevlar, is a, is a bulletproof uh, polymer, so on and so forth. In the previous example, there was a marriage between glasses, ceramics, and metals. The last example is of a gas turbine engine. Here there was a marriage of polymers, not polymers, um, uh, metals, ceramics, polymers, and so on and so forth. And this is the area I work. So, all right. So, what do you learn in this program in the materials uh, curriculum? Um, we always go by something called the materials tetrahedron. This is like our our go-to thing. You know? If you type in materials engineering in Wikipedia, this image. Okay, this is one of our um, 
prototypical uh, uh, way of thinking about uh, materials. All right. So what what we do is we worry about how arrangement of atoms, which is called structure, okay, affects properties, which is this. That's a very important aspect of materials. Then we worry about how to control this arrangement. How do you control how atoms are made? So it's related to properties, which is which is called processing, which is over there. Then we worry about how you measure these properties, how you measure structure, that's called characterization. And lastly, you worry about how they perform, how they fail in service. Okay, these are the main aspects of materials, which can be broadly summarized as this. We worry about what makes materials stick, and we sort of do stuff to them. We do different things to them to make them work better. Okay, as simple as that. All right. As I told you, it is a highly multidisciplinary uh, uh, field. Okay, it is a bridge discipline between engineering and science. It stands right there. So if I'm talking to an engineer, I'll pretend to be a scientist. If I'm talking to a scientist, I'll pretend to be an engineer. If I'm talking to a mathematician, I don't know what else. <laughs> So, but that's the thing, you know, I'm sitting, I'm straddling many fields simultaneously. So I wear many hats at different times. Okay? Um, there's a lot of physics involved, there's a lot of mechanics, for instance, there's a lot of quantum mechanics, some, some of which, which I do. Uh, I, a lot of time I spend sitting in front of a computer solving Schrodinger's equation, which may look like physics, but I'm doing it with an application in mind. Okay? So a lot of physics is involved, there is mechanics, there's thermodynamics, there's physics. There's a lot of chemistry involved because we need to worry about synthesis, we need to worry about rate, uh, rate equations, we need to worry about uh, uh, things of that nature, surface chemistry, for instance. There is a lot of biology involved because you need to worry about how uh, materials interface with uh, bio biological systems. You can think of dental implants or hip joints or a heart valve. You know, all these are biological interactions with materials and environment. Or whatever we do can be broadly classified into either making things skin, making things more energy efficient. Energy and environment are what is there. So it's a bridge discipline in that sense. And uh, in a philosophical sense, we bridge in, uh, time and length scales also. You have to deal with femtoseconds, which is relevant when you're dealing with how fast electrons uh, and uh, atoms move. It's in that time scale, uh, atoms particularly. And we also deal with years, you know. So a bridge has to last, or a dam has to last 50 years. So that's the length, the time scale that we deal with. We deal with length scale, we deal with structures, big structures. So it bridges this uh, length scale and time scale. Fine. So this is the material, materials curriculum. So last minute I've spent here. Uh, so basically, whatever I just told you, the scientific uh, fundamentals will be based on what, what you know, the broad idea of materials is structure, property, characterization, etc. So there will be theory classes, lab sessions. I won't take you through the semester since by semester break up because many of you won't come. Why bother, right? So when you come, you'll see that. If you come. We have a third year industrial group uh, and we take you to industries and that's to make a strong connection between applications and what you learn in the lab. Uh, there's a summer research and industrial internships. I have four second year uh, <coughs> Second to third year, in between students spending their summer in my lab, two of them are building a, a, a gas gun to fire small projectiles at things, and this is to simulate meteorite impact in satellites. That's what they're doing. Two other students are working on uh, gas turbines by solving things at atomic level, starting to get the So, this is the kind of summer projects that people do. Fun stuff, if you ask me, it may not be fun to you. Uh, and lastly, of course, as everybody else mentioned, there's a project in the back here. That's a picture from when I took uh, the first year batch on a trip. This is a so-called industrial trip. You can see what happens. Uh, and that is the curriculum. So I don't, this is fine. This is just the coursework. Last thing, uh, this is my last slide. The only other thing I want to say is where do people go after materials? As with many of the other disciplines of higher education, so um, they pursue their PhD immediately after their fourth year. Uh, some a portion of them continue. Let, let's say a third of the class continues for uh, a master's year. Uh, that's of course a more recent trend. Or they go for an MTech in India. It could be nice. We have had our proffers come back to do an MTech. So their first degree is BS, 
and then they come and do an ME and take the MI department. Uh, and of course, of about 25% uh, of them uh, leave materials and they take up a job or uh, they go for uh, management, finance companies, etc. Et okay? So that's the breakup of where people go. Majority still go to, uh, to PhD. Um, uh, from our first batch, we had people that go to Georgia Tech. This year, I have somebody going to Arizona State. Purdue. Purdue is a very good engineering school. Okay? So in sciences, Nobody really talks about uh, Purdue so much, but in engineering, it's a very high school. So, for materials engineering, it's a very well known school. Uh, we have people uh, going to Carnegie Mellon, Ohio State, all sorts of schools. Okay, so that's where that's where our alumni go. So, if you have questions, I'll come back and ask them later. So, thank you. Okay, from materials, we move on to physics. So, Kate Ramesh from the physics department will make a presentation. Since my time has cut short, I will just briefly describe something, whatever is uh, possible. And if you have any questions, I will be around for the lunch, then we can discuss. So, the undergraduate physics particularly consists of three participants in departments. This belongs to the physical and mathematical division. Professor Nandakumar has already said so much about mathematics. And I am going to tell only whatever is there from the physics, physical division with physics, center for high energy, and its meditation and applied physics. The Department of Physics started by established in 1933 by Professor C. V. Ram. From that time until today, it is always known for its excellence. And we have highly acclaimed faculty. And the students who have graduated from the department or in, or in top positions in many of the research and academic institutions. Yeah. Uh, several of these names which are associated with the department are Omi Baba, 
Vikram Sarasai, Professor Ragas Krishna, Professor G.N. Ramchandran, a very good protein digital person, Professor Ramakeshan. These are the old names who have done, who have contributed a lot for Indian science. Faculty members, including all the three departments, is more than 50, PhD students more than 200, publications more than 200 per year. So now, Professor Nandakumar had told, I don't want to compare with physics, but we need to compare. <laughs> <laughs> the main areas of, uh, of the interest of the physical science are kind of matter physics, atomic and optical physics, astronomy and astrophysics, high energy physics, nanoscience and nanotechnology. The way we take our students for our PhD programs has three different uh, categories. One is the PhD program post MSc, which contributes to the maximum intake of the physics students for our research. The second one is integrated PhD program, which is post BSc. Some of the students would have had some problems, would not have been able to continue their science education. They have a chance after doing the BSc, if they are really interested, they will be able to take up the in PhD program and continue their research for PhD. And there is another program which is called the external registration program. This is meant only for permanent uh, uh, positions, those candidates who are working in institutions of R&D type and they are well equipped themselves, they will come and do the research here because the grading what they get here is of high level. These are the courses for our uh, UG. Since I don't have time, I don't uh, talk much about this. The first semester, we work on mechanics, correlations and waves. This is Yes. supposed to be some repetition of uh, work what you have already learned but the experiments which we have designed for this are wonderful. These experiments we will design our first semester you will enjoy doing the mechanical experiment you are not done anywhere else. And all these experiments are world class equipment and the way of getting the results and everything is being computed in the place you will enjoy doing it. The second semester we will work on electrons. Here also we have very good experiments, the Faraday uh, labs and many of the experiments which are called Nobel Prize winning experiments which, which have been made in the tabletop and very nice experiments. And we have the third, the third semester you will have the thermal and modern physics which gives you a real flavor of unsolved problem and for a beginner it gives the problems which you can take up at this level. So then from semester 4 to semester 6, it's very high, hardcore uh, physics which you have to do. Now, humanity said that there is no exam, there is no homework. You have very tough work here, but everything is rewarding. You will enjoy working in this semester. Then from period 206, advanced and level of magnitude, period 217, are compulsory courses which you have to do in order to get your BSc research. And then in semester, between semester 6 and 7, you can just start with a project and the project in the physics department is going to be the best, uh, high standard project. So many of the students in their BS 5, 4, and 8 semester itself have published very good research papers and hence they are considered anywhere else in the world. So earlier we had a little bit of problem, but now even our BSA students are able to go to all universities abroad. And electives, what you can choose is from this. So you can see any of the subjects, whatever you want, you can choose depending on your interest. And at the beginning of the third semester, for fourth, fourth semester, we will assign you a faculty advisor who in turn will tell you what are the type of you want to go take and what are the type of minimum basic you have to take in a given particular field. So these advisors are available and the faculty advisors will guide you with this. So this is exactly what I am telling. So if a particular student is acceptably good, then we allow him to take higher courses and study more elective courses with the approval of the faculty advisors. And many experimental kits are given to the students. If you are innovative, you can set up your experiments and we will implement it in the lab depending upon the type of experiment or what you have done. And elective courses, 
can be from any of these uh, uh, list what I have given, but you can also substitute with some Angel link and other courses. This is our uh, first year in the uh, first year UG lab, which is uh, set up very well. And we have the other two labs, just opposite to this building. And these are some of the experiments which are set up. All these are obtained, these experiments are obtained from either PASCO or from Lebur and CV. So, uh, PASCO is a US based company and CV and uh, Lebur are German based company. I should tell you this, they have done a very nice work and there is so much to learn and you will enjoy doing the experiment. These are the list of experiments and you can see uh, an experiment they have this experiment where gravitational uh, concept of phone is a laptop experiment. Similarly, uh, the uh, then you have black body radiation, then uh, Frankfurt experiment is also a Nobel Prize winning experiment. All these are table Z1 effect. So you can see that such nice experiments are there for you to learn and clear the I'm not going to do this. So this is you have to accelerate. See, as a physics person, you should go on accelerating and reach it very important. Something like this, then our whole work is so heavy. And just to tell you, to be clear of uh, different uh, areas of uh, research, what our uh, uh, physical division is doing. Uh, typically, the is covered the range from 10 to the power of minus 9 meters to 10 to the power of 21 meters. That means starting from nanoscale, you go to the atom. So, if you take the high, take high energy physics, you have collider physics, high energy particle physics, where they have collaboration with some elementary particle physics. In fact, high energy particle physics with sun, they have already started two experiment faculty are here who are collaborating with sun and doing the large hadron collision type of experiment. Relativistic quantum mechanics, topological insulators, quantum wire, retain their liquids, super string theory. So you have three faculty members working on string theory. So that's the coverage what you have in the field. The next one is Astronomy and astrophysics and joint astronomy program. Plasma physics, micro hydrodynamics, cosmology, these are the areas which are covered. And these are in collaboration with the joint astronomy program, where the institutes like Ramakrishna Institute and in the Indian Institute of Astrophysics are combined, and the students are taken with the, the, the physics faculty being the coordinator. Then if you take the department of physics, you see a very strong CD group in condensed matter physics. What is this is now CHGP what I gave you. This is condensed matter physics. You see such nice uh, theoretical uh, problems have been taken up. Density of functional theory, turbulence flow, phase transition. So uh, transition from uh, superfluid to bottom and insulator. So molecular simulations. There are so many such areas which are computational. Then you see the experimental group. Interface of metal and graphene. The one interface what Professor Kathke was just mentioning, you see that the column has already been started and we have a lot of work going on. We have a lot of applications on manufacturing devices like diodes and transistors, not the conventional, the ones which are going to come up. Spintonic materials, memory devices, and study of two-dimensional materials. We have facilities to go down to 250 millikelvin and with a strong magnetic field of 10 tesla, which is where you can do exotic physics. And Physics of soft matter, collateral membrane, growth of uh, single crystals, electrical and optic wave properties, and polymer membrane are the different uh, topics which are tested. Our instrumentation people are working on applied photonics, cost of processing, yes, sensors and transducers, nano manipulation, nano metrology, flexible electronics. There are two faculty members who are working on electronics and optics of microfluidic nanoscale devices. So, this way, it's a wide variety of uh, topics what you can choose from one end to the other end, and you have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. scope for you. Project course, as I told you, is a very tough in the physics department, and you have uh, a very tough uh, evaluation of the project, and uh, the outcome of that is that our students have excelled very well. Thank you very much.
So last but not the least, uh, we move on to the biology curriculum. Professor Rupalnath will make a presentation of the biology. So, uh, and it not only it causes, you know, uh, uh, fever and other things, it actually is linked to the microcephaly. Does the brain how to do mathematics and chemistry? <laughs> and the new virus is that you heard about Nipah virus, which is, you know, there in 100 kilometers away. Uh, Ebola virus. Uh, so, we work on them so that uh, the people can stay healthy. 
We have bacterial diseases as well. You work on tuberculosis. In fact, this is one of the oldest and best center for research on tuberculosis. In the we work on salmonellosis, which causes honey upset. And not only work on them, we make sure that uh, we uh, do something so that they disappear, or at least we can save ourselves from that. Just like you know, vaccines do with the uh, Edward Jenner virus in the world. And now the smallpox is now there. Similarly, polio is almost uh, disappeared. So we strive to see whether uh, you know, it's possible or not. Uh, we not only the disease of this often organisms, but also diseases caused by ourselves, our body. Metabolic diseases, lifestyle diseases, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, cancer, genetic disorders. You heard about genetic disorder? Yeah? You must have seen this one. No? This is Algeria is linked to a genetic disorder, the mutation in the lamin gene. Uh, we also work on uh, Alzheimer's. Usually, uh, in the generation, probably I just started about it. But uh, so it, uh, Alzheimer's causes major three, you know, uh, symptoms. One is uh, the head shakes. The second is you can't remember anything. The memory is affected. And third one, I forgot. But never mind. <laughs> Not only all those awful diseases that we also work on how to evolve. We all know that we evolved in you know, the water and then slowly we hopefully began human being. And then after that, of course, we are dirtying the water after that. But <laughs> so we work on evolution. We see how during the evolution different branches appear and evolve and how they interact in a specific ecological niche. So that is done in the ecological sciences and how that is changing our know, ecology uh, in this changing uh, environment that we also have to We work on many uh, model systems, like Rosophila, which is probably one of the oldest model systems in animals, about 100 years, 110 years ago it started. Uh, and many of the information of our development and the diseases linked to the development information have come from uh, We work on plants. Uh, we work on plants, how they control, maintain their shape, because it's very important to me. It is not trivial to maintain the shape, the shape of animal. So there are, uh, for WT is wild type, and just change one gene and you see the shape keeps changing. It changes its size, it changes its structure, it changes its Even uh, mutants are made in the lab, but uh, there are mutants which nature also makes. For example, this is a, one type of lettuce is another type of lettuce. This looks more like wild type and this looks more like the mutant. So, uh, you know, we make mutants, we collect mutants from the nature and then work on them. One uh, topic that uh, we uh, address, uh, you can see. Uh, so, all the uh, leaves and the Drosophila wings are flat and they should be flat, you know, for optimal uh, you know, harvest of uh, sunlight. But if the growth is not uniform, they will not be flat. For example, if growth continues in the center, the periphery doesn't, then it become like this shape. Okay. And this is a, a actual a true mutant. And if the growth the more continues in the periphery and the stops in the center, it will become like a, a, a subtle shape or a little chip shape. Sorry, it's a wrong time before you live, but uh, so, uh, so how the shape is, is controlled in plant and animal. Uh, so, uh, as I said, you know, we work on biology to you know, make uh, uh, bases and information and get uh, healthy so that they can do their research. Uh, we have uh, really many exciting courses, and the first three courses that I have uh, shown here, all of you do. And then is the decision. But there's nothing much to decide actually, because you're going to join biology anyway. Uh, so these three courses we follow by uh, are followed by a bridge course where we introduce to the first three courses and, uh, and uh, little more advances, and then finally the things are better. You would have become a biologist by now, and then you continue on the biology, you join not only the UG courses, but you also join the NPSD and PhD courses, and you complete them and excel, here we do. And then you have continued through the sixth semester and seventh semester, and finally you do the exciting projects in, in biology. And these exciting projects, you guys will do, and then eventually lead to papers, I'll show you. Biology division, about more than 80 faculties, one of the largest departments, uh, bio, bio department anywhere in the world. And, uh, you know, biology is diverse, it's colorful, and it's fun as well. So that's why it should be fun. These are the people who are uh, 
instructor will take care of you in the back in the duty department. Your uh, all your duties and your they don't look like that. I just that I haven't been able to collect their uh, their pictures. We will interact with them very soon. And we have uh, UG uh, teaching assistants, six of them. They will take care of your lab needs and all. Uh, so uh, you know the distinguishing feature of UG Valley. I yeah, already mentioned we have a strong foundation of all other subjects and biostatics. And uh, they, uh, they, so when you graduate in biology, you are a true interdisciplinary scientist. You have done, uh, you have done all the subjects very in, in the variety. So you a PhD because you are allowed to do PhD. That is correct. Right. In fact, uh, during our uh, PhD interview this time, uh, some of the UG graduates came and so that eight semester project that I mentioned, uh, they actually generated the papers. In, in fact, one of them had gener generated a paper in uh, proceedings in uh, National Academy of Sciences in USA, which is one of the distinguished journals. Well, this is fun as well. And this is a fun. It's for the freedom of nature. Um, and you can, so regularly, uh, we uh, organize process and all that I'm saying, but we don't take it to the And uh, they, after you do a uh, year of graduate, you go to the and you go and with the first batch, in the second batch, they continue the tradition until then, the new chain now continues. So, UG Biology name has spread far and wide. So, we are not world famous in Bangalore, it is truly world famous in the world. Uh, I'll stop with that and uh, I can take a question. Thank you. Yeah, we now uh, have a brief question answer session. Uh, student volunteers have the microphone. Please pick, uh, take the microphone and uh, ask the question. Please raise your hand so that the student volunteers will bring you a microphone. I actually had a query regarding the mathematics that will be involved in the UG course. Will it, will it be more oriented towards the pure mathematics line or will it be the kind of mathematics that is required for the solving problems in say physics? Can you repeat the question? So the mathematics that will be taught in the UG course, will it be more towards the pure mathematics side, the abstract mathematics side or will it be more towards the applied and uh, no. the and useful in physics? Yeah, I understand. I personally, if you ask me, I don't like to distinguish pure mathematics and applied mathematics. There are certain basic things you should know, irrespective of ma what maths you do, it not only in mathematics department, also in other departments. So there are certain subjects you should know minimum. So the course designed for the first semesters are the things, not only the students who are going to take maths as their career should know, that maths is also required if you want to do good physics, good chemistry, good mathematics. And also good uh, uh, any subject if you, you, know, you want to learn that. That's the minimum required thing you should learn, okay, including the biology students. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have one question regarding the biology department. Uh, some major aspects of biology deals with computational biology or biology learning, which also needs some of you know, some knowledge of engineering, computer science, electrical engineering also. Will a biology major here at IIC BS will be able to cope cope up to those things in future? Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, courses which is in the interface of engineering and in fact we have a course in bioengineering. We have a very strong uh, computation group, the biocomputation. I think the courses that they designed during the EG, they actually designed to take you step by step 
to, to a, a position where you can build with those systems. So yes, be confident in the data because we got it. If I take a major in one particular subject or course, can I take a particular chapter or a particular course from another? Uh, like if I take, if I go into physics after the fourth semester, the fourth semester, and I develop an interest in quantum mechanics, can I take theoretical physics and math as a course later on? No, absolutely. You have uh, full freedom to take any course that you want to, in addition to fulfilling the compulsory course requirements. Any, any course that you would like to take, you're welcome to take, so long as you fulfill the major compulsory requirements. So, actually, I'm particularly interested in super string theory. So, I wanted to know the scope of it in, um, I mean, India. I don't think I am competent enough to answer this question. Uh, I would say that you should interact with the CHGP faculty uh, who are doing this. You can meet Professor Anita Singha, Professor Chetan, and others. Earlier, you said that you were going to do a degree in PSC plus MSC, like the um, one extra year. Uh, yeah. So, specifics. Yeah. So, in fact, we had started this four-year bachelor's program without thinking about the master's program, but when the first batch of students were going to come out, there was a requirement by the UGC to introduce the master's program. We realized that one staying back one more year and taking courses, which I did not uh, list here, but uh, you need to you need to take another addition of 32 credits, where there will be a major project and 12 credits. The courses worth 12 credits, and you get a master's for after one year. That's it. So about 60% of the students, uh, well, 50, 50 students, 50% stay back and 50% go on to do their maybe after the uh, bachelor's. But there is a possibility. But I must add that to stay back for your master, you need to have minimum of uh, requirements with respect to your CGPA, as well as you should have completed everything, no backlog, anything by it. April of that particular year. Those are the requirements. That's no, 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 absolutely not. not. Absolutely not. It's quite well spaced apart. So, if you wish to stop after the bachelor's after the end of the fourth year, in fact, uh, typically 50% of our students leave after bachelor's directly register for the PhD program elsewhere. The remaining 50%, the remaining 50 many of them, the fifth year. They do a, another project, the fifth year, along with 12 credits of courses. So it is not cramped uh, in a four year period. Everything is spaced uh, quite well apart. At the end of the fourth year, we give you an option of uh, whether you want to leave after bachelor's or continue for the master's. And then you exercise your option and then But uh, as uh, uh, my colleague already mentioned, uh, the students have uh, fulfilled all the requirements for the bachelor's uh, at the end of the fourth year, uh, that is by April of that third year. I have a question for the physics department. Uh, I saw in the slide that in the eighth semester uh, we have some elective courses. Uh, so, can you please elaborate about them? See, uh, as, uh, the, as the course curriculum requires, you have to complete some minimum courses and all compulsory courses. Other than that, three elective courses you can take, which are listed in the elective part of the environment. So, you can take any of them depending on uh, your choice and your faculty and managers. Uh, system. Uh, let me add to what uh, Professor Ramesh mentioned. In fact, there are instances in the past uh, batches of students where the students have exhausted all the courses offered by a particular department in physics. Sir, uh, I have a question for the chemistry department. Uh, what are the scopes and development in the organic and animal? 
uh, with regard to uh, our students who have graduated, uh, you know, majoring in chemistry, uh, as I mentioned, 50% uh, of the students leave after bachelor's, and all of them have gone abroad for PhD program. And uh, the remaining 50% uh, that stays back in the country for a master's have also gone on to do their PhD. So it is still, uh, you know, uh, premature to comment as to what uh, is in store for these students because they are still continuing their PhD. So will, uh, time will only tell us what they are going to do after the PhD. So it will be another maybe five years down the line that we will be able to uh, give you any data with regard to what they are going to uh, uh, you know, pursue after PhD. So, uh, still, you know, the students who have graduated in the first batch uh, are yet to complete their PhD programs. Right? So, maybe five years down the line, we will, we will be able to give you some data, some statistics as to what our uh, alumni are doing after PhD. So, my doubt was regarding uh, the So, you mentioned about the majors and minors. So, what exactly is the utilization and uh, what exactly is expected and required of that? Uh, for the major discipline, as uh, it was already mentioned, at the end of the third semester, you give an option uh, to choose a particular major discipline. And once you choose a particular major discipline, you have to fulfill 52 credits of uh, code, uh, credits, uh, 52 credits of uh, courses in the major discipline. And if you also choose a particular minor, you have to fulfill 15 credits in that particular minor discipline in the uh, four-year program. Right. So there are certain courses uh, that are mandatory. Uh, choosing minor is optional. Uh, and if you, in fact, uh, don't give any option for minor uh, at the end of the third semester, absolutely not an issue. Uh, at the end of the, towards the end of the fourth year, that is the eighth semester, we also do an analysis of uh, all the courses that you've taken. So in case you full, you have fulfilled credits towards a particular minor discipline, we give you the option whether you want to have it mentioned in your uh, degree certificate. Right? So this is completely open. Another one more thing, uh, you mentioned that after the BS, you can directly join the PhD program. Is it true for all universities or specifically for American universities? Yeah, I think it is uh, primarily for the universities in the U.S. Uh, they accept students after bachelors, after four years uh, bachelors. IAC accepts uh, students after bachelors. I don't think anybody has. Yeah, I don't. Know. Yeah, Germany. I am I'm told that uh, they also accept after four year bachelor. And in India, IIT Kanpur and IIC accepts students after bachelors. Uh, we have just one more question. You can ask any other further questions in, for the entire session after lunch. Or you can even ask during lunch to any of us. Sir, I want to ask uh, ask about the post PS experience. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, if one does a teaching from India instead of going abroad, will the scope of, uh, uh, will the scope, will the scope somehow decrease in your Professional, professional not, not at all, not at all. Is it? Many students, of course, I'm not, uh, I mean, we don't have any data to give with regard to our undergraduate students. Right? But uh, students who have uh, completed PhD from our institute, those who have joined after masters from other universities in India, uh, they occupy really top positions in India as well as abroad. Right. Their, their prospects are very, very, very bright. So there is absolutely no doubt, doubt about that uh, at all. So with regard to undergrad, our own undergraduate students who uh, uh, are yet to complete their PhD program, we don't have any data as yet to comment on. Uh, we were told about 
Yeah. Tutorial sessions are uh, designed in such a way that whatever is covered in the class, theory class, by the faculty member, by, by the professor, will be taken up later. For example, problem solving session will uh, be involved in the tutorials, right? Or any additional help that you require uh, will be covered in the tutorial session. These tutorial sessions are typically uh, conducted by the TAs, these are graduate students who are doing PhDs, so they take care of the tutorial sessions. And I think most of the disciplines have uh, TAs taking care of the tutorials. I think some disciplines, uh, in some certain cases, uh, the professors themselves conducted uh, conduct the tutorial sessions. These are like, for example, problem solving uh, meaning. Uh, the first three semesters. Okay, uh, I think we'll conclude this uh, FAQ session. Uh, uh, so, to announcements before you leave for lunch. Uh, after lunch, what uh, basically your schedule is for so the students you go to labs, we'll take it to different labs. Modification. Just a slight modification because uh, we uh, are quite late, quite delayed uh, with respect to our uh, timetable. So, uh, all of you would have received the feedback forms, right? So, please make sure that you fill up the feedback forms and hand over these feedback forms at the end of the lab tour uh, after lunch in the UG office. Please make sure that you fill up the form carefully and hand over these forms in the UG office, which is very close to the lunch area that we are going to go uh, after this session. The second announcement is that um, uh, lunch will be served uh, for everybody. All uh, student volunteers are there to guide you to the lunch area. And then, uh, since uh, the parents did not have any uh, opportunity to ask questions, we decided to have a small uh, modification to the program. So we are going to meet the parents after lunch in the faculty hall in the same place for a short while. The deans will meet with the parents for a short time and then we will excuse ourselves so that we can have interaction with the uh, students who are doing their bachelor's program in the institute. Then uh, after lunch, the students will visit the departments and then I think the student volunteers are there to take you around. Please make sure that uh, uh, in case anybody gets lost, the uh, meeting point is the main library. In case you get lost, you ask uh, anybody in the campus where the main library is and you can come there and wait there so that you'll, your parents or uh, relatives can find you. Right? So the meeting place is uh, main library in case you get lost with the laptop. Some, some announcement from the student. So we will be splitting you into eight groups approximately and taking uh, we'll be taking you to approximately four lab each. Uh, so have your lunch quickly. We'll start the moving at around uh, 2 20 to uh, for parents the session will be here after your lunch. Yeah, uh, so basically that's it. And the library will just see you on the way from here. Just know about the library. Yeah, one, one more uh, a quick announcement. The payment, the fee payment gateway will be activated uh, this evening so that in case you wish to uh, pay the fees, it will be available from tomorrow. You want to check now, check the ranks very close. It changes at me. Apart from that. Oh, is the mic still working?
Yeah, this is okay. Uh, just uh, one more announcement. Uh, after the lab visits, uh, the student interaction session with us UG students will be in F12. Uh, it's only students to student interaction uh, session. So uh, once the labs are done, please come down, okay? Uh, it'll be no PB F12. We'll take you there. मैं क्या करूँ इसका? इसका क्या करूँ? अरे उस प्रवीण का भी भी इस ओल्ड फिलिंग्स मीटिंग। अब the student volunteer will get you there. After the lab, you will order. Luggage? हाँ? What? Okay. Something. I see.